Yo, what up, y'all? Terry Warford. I hope you're having a good day so far, wherever it is you at. If this is your first time here, a big fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the family, part of the squad, and you came back, welcome back. Make sure you drop a hashtag up in here, up in the comments so I know you're here. Let's do a quick family check so we know where we at on the channel. Currently, we are at 9,719 subscribers. Ooh, so close to 10K. So I got to ask y'all for a favor. Hey. Make sure right now that you drop a like on this video and I would love if you drop the comment also. Those two small things, those two small things, they tell YouTube, yo, this video is dope and let's push Terry Warfield's video out to other people. So if you could please do those two small things for me real quick and if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that already. So what are we doing today anyways, man? Well, I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this. And the only thing I used was this 2020 iPad Pro. This has quickly become my favorite device, even though it's not my MacBook Pro replacement. I, I talked about that in a different video that I'll put up there in the corner if you're interested. However, like I said, I do love the 2020 iPad Pro. The whole point of this video is to just take you through my creative process. A few disclaimers real quick. I'm sorry for talking your ear off. Keep in mind that creativity is subjective. So I, I understand if you don't like the picture that I made that I'm about to show you how how I make totally understand that however if you don't like it I don't care beauty is in the eyes of the person who created whatever the art was so please if you don't like the photo just keep it to yourself secondly there's a thousand ways to skin a cat I'm not saying that you need to do exactly what I do to edit photos if you see something you like by all means take a piece of it and apply it to your own skill set so without further ado y'all ready I'm ready let's get into it Okay, y'all, today's video is sponsored by nobody because nobody helped me pay for this iPad but me. So, no, today's video is not sponsored by anything but Terry's hard-earned dollar. But anyways, we are in Adobe Lightroom on the 2020 iPad Pro, and I already have the photo that we want to work with loaded into this thing. So a few things I'm going to do with this photo, as you saw earlier. We're going to take this daytime photo and turn it into a night photo. And I'm totally sorry you hear dishes and my daughter in the background. My wife is in the kitchen cooking, doing all that stuff. But this photo came from when I did my POV street photography video with the 85 millimeter. If y'all want to check that out, the link will be down there in the description. Currently, we are in Adobe Lightroom. Now, I do pay for the paid subscription because it allows you to edit raw, plus you get cloud syncing abilities. So you don't have to have the Adobe Lightroom paid subscription, but if you're anything like me and you like shooting raw, we're talking about photos here, then you'll need the Adobe paid subscription. Also, the other program we're gonna be using is Affinity Photo, and you don't have to use Affinity Photo, it's just what I'm using. You can really accomplish the same thing with Photoshop or anything else, so Affinity Photo is not free unfortunately but here we go so let's go ahead and hop right into it the first thing I want to do is adjust the crop so let's go ahead and adjust that I want the crop to be right about here and then we're gonna crop this side in so we're only seeing about this right here all right I like that crop so far now the challenge with turning the photo that was taken in the daylight into a photo that looks like it was taken at night is the way that the light bounces off of subjects and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out all of the highlights because we don't want it to look like it's any shiny surfaces in the photo. We want this to look like it was taken at night. The next thing I'm going to do is pull my shadows down some to make it a little bit darker, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the next thing I'm going to do, because this is rather warm, because obviously we took it in broad freaking daylight, I want this to be colder like it was taken at night. Night always gives you like that blue cast, that dark cast. So I'm going to take my temperature slider, move that bad boy all the way over here. All right. That's too, that's, that's, a, that's too much. Uh, like right about there. We can always go back and kind of mess with that if we need to. Also, there's some yellow and some orange in here. I know right off the bat, I hate yellow in photos. So I'm pulling out the yellows. The oranges can stay because we got the cones right there. 
in the lower right hand corner. Now, I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks right now. So, I'm gonna teach y'all a trick. One thing that I hated when I first got into Lightroom is I didn't think that there was any type of picture bridge to open up your edits in another program. So we'll hit copy the photo, and that's gonna take our edits and shoot it right over into Affinity Photo. And just like that, here we go. All right, so now that we got Affinity open, I'm only using Affinity for two things in this particular editing scenario. I wanna cut the buildings out and then drop a different sky behind the buildings. And this is real easy with Affinity. So, we're gonna switch the module up here. We're gonna grab our Smart Select tool, which is right here. We're gonna increase the size, actually it's already where I like it. We're gonna lead us at add. Now you can either select the sky, or if you want to, sorry that's my daughter again, you can select the buildings. For ease, we're just gonna go ahead and select the buildings and uh, let's get started. So boom, all we do is drag the pencil over the buildings. You could do this with a finger, however it is more precise with a pencil, but you see what I'm doing? Affinity is doing all the heavy lifting for me. That's how easy it is. All right, so I wanna zoom in also to make sure my edges are straight. So as you see like right here, it didn't exactly nail that corner. So I'm just gonna flip this tool to subtract, decrease the size, and then push this line up against the corner of the building. Go around the rest of it, make sure it's a clean cut everywhere else. If not, then you do the same thing I did over here. You just go back and you know subtract the add until you get it right. Here's another example up here where it didn't really catch. So I'm gonna change that to add, tap up there, tap right there, subtract, take that back off. Oh, you wanna be a little sucker right now, huh? Go to subtract. If you had this problem, make the tool smaller. Oops, change that back to add and then it'll give you more precise control over the selection tool. And everywhere else looks pretty decent, all right? So now that we have our building selected, we're gonna go to refine, and we're gonna go to output, new layer, apply. Give it a second, do its thing. Now you see up here, we can turn that background on and off. Now another dope thing about Affinity is you can go through the menu to add another picture, but me personally, I just like to open up the Photos app and drop a photo right on top. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go to my Photos, which is right here, open this up in the card view, and then find a picture I'm looking for. So I wanna use this photo right here. So I'm gonna tap and hold and just drag it over there. And it's on top now. And then we can swipe up the Photos app and get rid of that. So we also want to go ahead and size this to where we want the sky. All right. So I'm going to go in here and turn the opacity down so I can see where exactly I want this. I want this to be like right in between here. So I'm going to reposition, stretch this out, and boom. I like the way that looks. So let's turn the opacity back up. And then we're gonna switch the layers around. So we want this layer behind the new layer or the cutout layer, the pixel layer right here, we want that behind. So all you do is tap and hold on it and then drag it underneath that layer. And boom, just like that, now we got action. Now this is starting to take shape, we just gotta take this a little bit further. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go to this layer right here, which is already selected. I'm gonna go to FX because I want a little bit of Gaussian blur on there, just to give it like a little bit of separation. So I'm gonna tap on Gaussian blur and then bump up the radius 1.9. I like the way that look. All right, let's close this out. You know what, actually, I'm gonna take that and reposition it just a little bit. So I'm gonna stretch it out so that horizon line is actually beneath our building. All right, there we go. That's perfect. So now that I got this how I want it to look, let's go up here and hit export. And right here, we wanna leave it at TIFF. Let's hit share and send that bad boy right back to Lightroom. Just like that, there's our photo. I'm cool with actually the way this looks. So I'm not gonna mess with the colors of this. So now let's go ahead and refine this, right? It looks like it was kind of taken at night. So let's go ahead and increase the exposure some, but let's pull the highlights back out 
Let's pull our shadows back down. And then I'm gonna take my effects tab and bump my clarity up to give it that punch. And actually, I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit more. There we go, let's pull those blacks down. That really gives it a moody night look. And I'm also gonna go to effects and put a vignette on it. I'm gonna add just a tad more vibrance and saturation just to make it punch a little bit more. And then lastly, you can go into your S-curve and mess around with this if you want to. All right, that's it, man. So I really like the way this looks. I think we achieved what we were trying to achieve with turning this into a dark night photo from the original. So I'm gonna go back to the original real quick just so you can see it. All right, that was the original. That's the edited. So original, edited. Original, edited. Original, edited. All right, y'all, now that that's out the way, man, I hope you thought that was helpful. I hope you learned a little something out of that tutorial. If you like this video, if you want me to do more of these, make sure you let me know in the comments. Let's get this channel to 10K. It's my daughter in the background. Let's get this channel to 10K. Only about 200 some odd more subs to go. I need everybody's help. So with that being said, that's all I got for you. I'm out. Peace and chicken grease, Terry Warfield. Peace!